Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Is it just me or are cassette tapes like insanely nostalgic? Now, I was born in the early 80s. And so cassettes were my format. And I guess for some reason, my parents didn't have a turntable or they weren't for, for whatever reason, part of the vinyl era in their lives. And so I first started seeing music in our household and in a car on cassette, namely this one, not this actual one. Gosh, I wish this one all the time. And eventually this one as well. So today we're going to talk about Phil Collins cassettes. I'm going to show you, I have some pretty cool ones, not as cool as other people out there, but I have some pretty cool ones. I think you're going to be interested in seeing, and then we'll talk about tapes. Welcome to a new episode of Everything Phil Collins. A huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who help keep the lights on on this channel. So big thank you to them and come on over to our Patreon channel to show your love and support. Today, I want to talk about cassettes. Now, as it stands today, my main way of listening to Genesis and Phil Collins is vinyl. I really like my turntable at home. I like my, my collection. That's where I'm starting to get a lot of cool, unique stuff like bootlegs, some of the stuff that you guys have been sending me. And of course, like Bluetooth and, and streaming and some of the music I have on Apple Music, that's like pretty convenient. It's surprisingly not the most common way I listen to music un unless I'm driving because my CD player is dead in my car. But mostly I listen to vinyl. But recently I... I had a great tape deck that was up here in the studio and I decided to bring it downstairs and then bring my tape collection downstairs as well. And now, like I would say 20% of the time I put on a tape, there's a little less sides flipping than, than with vinyl. Um, so recently I've been listening to some of my tape collections. Some of my stuff is in really good condition. I was just listening to this copy of Face Value, which for whatever reason I hadn't listened to in a while, and I didn't realize how good sounding this cassette is. I know a lot of you, the cassettes are, are, are completely destroyed. So for me personally, I'm really nostalgic with cassettes. Most of my teenage years were with CDs. As soon as CDs were invented or they, or they were commonplace, I was collecting them like crazy right up until 2010, 2011, 2012, that kind of era. And then I, I went full-time vinyl. Uh, now I personally don't have any connection to CDs. I really don't like them. I've kept my collection for the most part. I do think they're going to come back around again. I think they're going to be valuable to my kids, I bet. Now, a lot of people in the comments are going to talk about all the bad things about cassettes, that if you leave them in the back of your car, they're going to melt, that they sound worse than all other formats. They degrade the most more than any other format. They don't last as long as other formats. The case is impractical. The artwork is so much smaller than the vinyl. I get it. I agree with all these things. But my most favorite thing is this. I love that sound. I love the sound of like, you know what I mean? They're like trading cards. It's like Pokemon. Listen, if you um, were a teenager in the 70s, uh, if you were an adult in the 80s, you probably stuck with vinyl. And then at some point, maybe you upgraded to CDs. Maybe for a lot of you watching, you completely hopped over cassettes. I know for places all around the world, their relationship with cassettes varied. In some cases, like Indonesia, I believe, they had cassettes right up until just a couple years ago. In some countries, they just didn't really bother with cassettes at all. Today in Japan, cassettes are really popular in like the lo-fi beats and the hip-hop world, electronic music, ambient music. In fact, I run a record label and we've released cassettes. I'm a musician and I've released my own cassettes just a couple years ago. Don't try to order them on Bandcamp. They're sold out. Here's a cool one I did for my latest record and we did it on this kind of cool clear look, like kind of that single cassette single. My, for my album, Worried Mind. And we ended up doing this on Cool Red Cassette. And then this J card flips out like that. Anyway, they all sold out. And I mean, we didn't do a lot of them, uh, less than 100, but they sold out. And, and a lot of my friends in like indie rock, they do really cool tapes. This is a new tape. This is a new tape still in the cellophane. This is some ambient music. These are like by artists that I collect. And uh, I don't listen to these as much. I, I They're more to me trophies. And I think, you know, we've heard that like a lot of like, Taylor Swift fans or younger vinyl collectors are buying records and just hanging them on their shelves as opposed to listing them. That's okay. I get that. I've got a few Phil Collins and Genesis records hung on the shelf there. No judgment. And I think the same is true for a lot of modern day cassette labels and cassette fans is that some people don't actually have a way of playing them. 
but they look super cool. And so we just put them on the shelf and that's, you know, it's a great way to support the artist. If you're going to buy the album on Bandcamp or you're going to stream it essentially for free on Spotify, buying a $7 tape with like $3 shipping is not really a big deal. You get this little physical artifact as a way to support the band. So that's happening right now in indie music and it's somewhat popular in subcultures in America and in Europe and, and uh, very popular in Japan. Another one of my favorite things I just kind of showed you here is the spines, right? I mean, gosh, when we, it's all over on the artwork too of, of this channel. Uh, and we saw that on the last Domino tour when they showed the spines during throwing it all away. That's probably one of my favorite things. It's where cassettes have vinyl beat in the spine. I mean, a lot of the old vinyl records, the spines are so thin. Today, they're bigger, they're thicker. The gatefolds are heavier, but uh, some of the older stuff, it's degraded and you can't see the spines on vinyl. So I love spines. Um, of course, we all, you know, the, the packaging gets destroyed. Um, but yeah, anyway, for me, it's super visceral. And I want to know from you um, if you have that like personal connection. For me, I think I got started with face value. Well, I don't know. I think the first tape kicking around probably that in my memory probably was No Jacket, like probably No Jacket and Hello, because I was born in 83. And so No Jacket came out in, in 85. And so these two records would have been around the time of my birth. So I probably wasn't aware of music before I was two years old. So probably by the time I was three or four and actually could hold something in my hand, uh, it would have been No Jacket and it would have been Hello, I Must Be Going. Now, today I want to talk about some of the Phil Collins cassettes I have and show you some of the things I have. I have a few kind of rarish items. I'm not going to do any Genesis today. Uh, I have a lot more Genesis tapes, but I also, um, my Genesis collection sucks. By the way, my best cassette collection is Peter Gabriel, but that had nothing to do with me. That had to do with our friend Dez, who sent me a box full of incredibly amazing and rare Peter Gabriel cassettes. Uh, I was so grateful for that. If you haven't watched that video, go back into the channel and find that. My Genesis collection is not great. It's pretty much just the albums. One of the, a record that I'm really happy about is finding a copy of Turn It On Again, the hits from 1999. That's really rare. And that speaks to uh, the rarity of some tapes. Because tapes were so ubiquitous in the mid 80s, you can really easily find in mid 80s, late 80s, you could really easily find things like but seriously, and no jacket required, and invisible touch. It comes up quite a, a bit. We can't dance comes up quite a bit. Both sides, even serious hits, is probably the most common uh, cassette that I see kicking around. But older cassettes, like when you go back to albums that maybe weren't even originally made on cassette, like Foxtrot and Nursery Crime, even stuff like Three Sides Live is hard to find or Seconds Out. If I see a good copy of Selling Them by the Pound, I'd grab it. I have some of these tapes, but they're ones that were like ma manufactured a few years later, probably just reproduced in the 80s. But as you get more and more recent records, like late 90s or early 2000s, it becomes near impossible to find stuff like Calling All Stations or Turn It On Again, The Hits or the Big Band album. Is there even a cassette of A Hot Night in Paris? I doubt it. Tarzan, Brother Bear, that's Testify. Those are really, really difficult. But I'm going to show you some of those today. And I'll let you know what I'm still looking for. My Genesis collection, I thought it was okay. And then I saw some of you in um, the Genesis Museum book. And then some of you have been posting online your collection of Genesis, Phil Collins stuff on cassette. And it blows my mind. It makes me so jealous. It is a collection that I want to expand on personally. In addition to my vinyl and my vinyl bootlegs, cassettes are, are part of a big part of my collection. They are so impossible to find because they don't last as long. And, and they were really discarded much quicker than vinyl. A lot of people hung on to their vinyl collection, but cassettes was, was such a flash in the pan that people really just had no interest in them. They just tossed them in the garbage or they just got melted in the back window of a car. So I find it really hard, especially where I am in Canada. I can come across you know, serious hits live or... Genesis shapes. That, that's really easy to find on cassette these days. But finding rare stuff on cassette uh, is really difficult. So I, I want some of you to tell me about some of the cool stuff you have. Make your own video and show me your cassette collection. I'm obsessed with cassettes. I'm obsessed with Genesis and Phil Collins stuff. And I hope to find more and hope you, hopefully you guys can help me.
Um, so let's just go through this. Um, you you realize too the the uniqueness in some of these Atlantic, and I don't know if you guys had this is made in Canada. So I don't know if you guys had this type of artwork where it was this like very classic black spine, and you have the artwork as you would see it uh, today digitally, but as you would see it on vinyl, which is square. And then because they didn't have like a full art example, they just would put the record label logo, the artist's name, and the album title. And they would do that for lots of different artists and lots of different album titles. And so that's what I have for face value and hello, I must be going possibly because at the time the graphic designer didn't create a version, a vertical version. So they had to just, um, they were going off of the vinyl version. Now, as we get in a little bit deeper, perhaps by the time of no jacket required, the record label said to the graphic designer, go ahead and make a vertical version uh, or something that works better for cassette. And that's why we have far more elaborate um, J card and album cover for no jacket required. This is in really rough shape and I'd like to get a better one. See, that's the other thing in my collection is like, not only do I want to find rare versions and I know there are a lot of you guys have some really hilarious versions of But Seriously and Face Value out there from different countries around the world. I'm so jealous. Um, but I'd even just like to get better conditions than the one I have. So that's No Jacket Required. But Seriously is also a record you will find all the time on cassette. This is probably one of the most popular formats that it's sold on. It was able, you're able to have the whole album on it, unlike the vinyl where um, they had to cut some songs because the album was too long. And so there is the J card for But Seriously. I mean, look at that, right? And see, that's, what's not to love? Look at all of the different canvases that you're seeing there and all of the artwork. And I know, listen, I know there's nothing beats at 12 inch by 12 inch vinyl. I'm with you. Like you're preaching to the choir here. Uh, this is a black cassette, heavy duty. I don't know what why they decided between black and clear. I think clear is something that came along a little later. This was one of the most... Uh, probably best selling of his cassettes and that's serious hits. And again, one of the reasons why you see that all over the place. Uh, how many of you have this? I mean, listen, if you're going to have any of Phil's stuff, it's probably on cassette. It's probably about seriously and serious hits live, right? This is what I grew up with. I mean, this was like, honestly, I, I wasn't fully aware of Phil's music. Um, on an album by album basis, it was through serious hits live that that's how I knew that easy lover exists or separate lives or against all odds. I didn't know that they were soundtrack songs or what album they came from, or they were even someone else's songs. It's stuff like two hearts, groovy kind of love. I had no idea. It was just serious hits. You know, that reminds me the tape I'm missing, which is not hard to find, but I've just personally never come across it is Buster. I don't have, I have it on CD, I have it on vinyl, but I don't have a tape of Buster. Um, I'm actually going to a record store this weekend. So pray for me. Maybe we'll find some, some cool, maybe we'll find Buster. Maybe we'll find some cool stuff. As we're starting to move on in years, it gets a little bit harder to find stuff. By the way, uh, I talked about this on the channel. This is such an interesting story that um, this sold so well uh, because it was his only greatest hits right up until um, the hits tape, which we'll talk about in a second. But before we do, let's move on to both sides. This is a tape I probably listened to the most. Um, this is a really nice one. This was probably also designed or originally intended for cassette. Although by this time they were doing uh, CDs, um, very common to get this on CD and cassette. It wasn't, I think it was done on vinyl. That's one of the things on my wish list is to find the original um, 90s release of both sides on vinyl and dance into the light on vinyl. I love both sides. Oftentimes, I think it's my favorite album. I really do. I have a visceral connection to But Seriously. So I say that that's my favorite album, but both sides is so special and so unique, something that um, he did a really good job on. It's more of a vibe than, than it is a collection of great songs, in my opinion. The overall feeling of both sides is a vibe, whereas But Seriously is a collection of really amazing songs. So after that, we have this really interesting, which was kind of hard to find, but not too hard. And this finally dethroned, but serious or serious hits as his greatest hits um, bestseller. And so this just has the hits on it. I'm not a, a huge, I'm not a huge fan of Phil's hits because, or hits compilations. I would like to make my own one day. And that's because 
If you don't love Groovy Kind of Love or Separate Lives uh, or Two Hearts uh, or Against All Odds, then I feel like these records are always... I did love the artwork for this, by the way. Look at that. It's so, so cool. Um, I uh, Oh, I did this sort of order, didn't I? I should have done Dance in the Light. Sorry. Um, I loved the artwork for this. This is the, honestly his best artwork he's ever done. All of these paintings. I wonder if these exist anywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, like I always feel like these albums miss, they miss every day. They miss can't turn back the years. They miss find a way to my heart. They miss hanging long enough. They miss, doesn't anybody stay together? I mean, like, listen, I know we're all fans of the deep cuts, but to me, it's like every other song is one of these soundtrack songs. I'm just not crazy about it. So I'm not a fan of the greatest hit stuff. I told you the story last week about Dance into the Light, riding in the back of my buddy's van and being like, hey, what is this tape? I recognize this guy's voice. And I had was in high school and I had fallen out of love with Phil for a very short, dark period trying to be cool. And that's when he released Dance into the Light. And again, we get to see like the album cover designed with cassettes, knowing that would be a possibility. But now this time, though, this would have been the end of cassettes. This would have been the last record that would be easily found on cassette aside maybe aside maybe from that greatest hits album but everybody had been moved to cds at this point some of the old dudes uh you know where t tapes were still selling and it's ironic i found this in the back of my buddy's minivan is is vehicles right it wasn't until deep into the 2000s that cars came with cd players standard my girlfriend's family bought uh a car, a Pontiac in 2001, 2002, I think. And it came with a cassette deck. So uh, you had to pay extra for a CD player. So I think that maybe helped extend the life of, of cassettes a little bit longer. Okay, the last three tapes that I want to show you are ones I had to go to Discogs for because I didn't think I'd ever find them. Uh, aficionado, if you're a tape fan, the best place to go for new uh unopened modern cassettes is Indonesia. Now, you don't have to necessarily go there. You could just go to Discogs. Um, but that's where I picked up. First of all, is Tarzan. Uh, I didn't have this. This is probably maybe a little easier to find in North America, although I personally never come across it. So I think this version was made in Indonesia. Original motion picture soundtrack of Tarzan from 1999. A massive foldout. Now, I had a copy of Aladdin and Lion King and on cassette when I was a kid. So it's very normal for Disney to do these kind of things. I, I'll grab another copy if I do find a Canadian or American uh, cassette version of Tarzan. I'm sure it's out there, but I was in a hurry. And so I bought these next three cassettes from the same seller in Indonesia. In Indonesia, you can just find some really, really unique stuff. And then, of course, Brother Bear, which... Again, you can see the artwork. We're now back full circle. The artwork is the square of the CD and just stretched out. So they had no plans to do this uh, on, on cassette, but this was for Indonesian market as well. There's Tarzan and Brother Bear. So this is Brother Bear. Um, I honestly have not even listened to this cassette. I got it a couple months ago. Um, I'm not a diehard Brother Bear fan. I'd love it if Disney did release this on vinyl. Um, but that's cool. There's some great songs, man. On On My Way is my one of my favorite Phil Collins songs. Okay, let's leave that. Here's my final one. It's my, my prized possession. It's my coolest cassette I own. And it's cassettes. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Raise your hand if you knew this existed. I had no idea that this existed. This is the Love Songs compilation that came out in 2004. Um, and I, of course, I got this on CD. It was a terrible CD because it the the those little teeth on the tray cards would shatter and and the CDs would fall out everywhere. But this is a double cassette. Um, and again, I believe this is from. This could have been from Indonesia. I'm not sure. You let me know um, where this was manufactured or what you know about this. But this is so cool, right? Like it actually doesn't fit when you compare it, it doesn't fit anywhere in where I keep my cassettes because it's like not double, but not, it's like one and a half size. But this is such a cool little case. Who even knew this type of thing existed? And the tapes just fit kind of snug in there. Let's take it out. 
Look at this. Look at this. So there's the case, a little dirty. Okay, so that's that's the artwork. I love this compilation. It was really, really good. Remember I told you I don't love a lot of compilations. I'm not crazy about the live stuff at the end, but we get a lot of cool gems in here. And it was an opportunity for him to include stuff um, that we didn't get, that normally wouldn't be on a greatest hits. For example, Tearing and Breaking, love that song. It was a B-side. But songs like um, Can't Turn Back the Years, Don't Let Him Steal Your Heart Away, Please Come Out Tonight, This Must Be Love, those are great songs that normally wouldn't be put on a Greatest Hits album, even It's In Your Eyes, and Least You Can Do. Some of my favorite, all-time favorite songs. And of course, we have You'll Be In My Heart from Tarzan. So this was a really good compilation, and I think it sold really well. Now, this wasn't done on vinyl that I know of. Good golly, wouldn't that be fun to find? Um, but of course, all over the place in CDs. Uh, and I did not know that this existed. And so when I found this on Discogs, I had to buy it. You know me, I love to find records, uh, vinyl, cassette, CDs in the wild. There's an incredible feeling of not knowing what you're going to find, walking into a record store, finding a rare bootleg of Genesis, a handmade bootleg on vinyl, or finding an unopened copy of Calling All Stations on CD, or finding something bizarre as uh, Phil Collins' cassette combo pack that you didn't even know existed. So I prefer to buy things in the wild. I love it when folks like you send me stuff. That's uh, just as exciting as discovering it in the wild. And then my last case scenario is uh, buying it on Discogs. So I'm going to maybe hang up the phone here and go over to Discogs and shop around before you guys see this video and, and, and go and up the price of everything. But anyway, thanks for watching. And I want to know in the comments below, do you have a cassette collection? Are you hanging on to them? There is a company, um, I can't remember now, I'll flash it up on the screen, that is making new Walkmans, like new cassette players that are Bluetooth and they have lithium lithium ion batteries. And uh, I've been meaning to grab one. They're about 250 bucks. Um, but uh, I really actually want to grab one. So hopefully we see cassettes come back for me, if only for nostalgia. But I want to know, are cassettes nostalgic for you? Question number one and question number two. What cool Genesis and Phil Collins cassettes do you have in your collection? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button for exclusive videos, behind the scenes content, and to have your say on future topics before I film, have a look at our Patreon page. Thanks for watching.